What's going on, you gamers? Today we're going to be going over a little bit of Asterigos Curse of the Stars. What I'm going to be going over is what I believe are the best two weapons that you can be using very early game, probably even into the later game. So if that interests you, stay tuned. That's coming up next. Welcome back everybody, today we're going over a little bit more Asterigos Curse of the Stars and I must admit this game's a little bit of a hidden gem. I wasn't sure how good it was going to be but it's a lot of fun to play and personally I'm having a blast. But what weapons are great to start off with in order to get the most out of the game and not fall over very often? Now pretty much at the start of the game you're going to require quite a few options so it might be a little bit overwhelming some people straight away. I think a lot of people are probably going to go for the sword and shield. The sword and shield are amazing to try because they're able to negate a lot of damage with that block, you're able to take on multiple enemies, they don't however do the most damage and sometimes if you're getting hit from behind it can be a bit of a nightmare because you're in amongst the thick of everything. I switched off of this and went for a combo that's completely different but I think anyone who likes mage builds will probably love this one. So what I'd recommend would be having a staff as your main and then having just down the bottom here some bracelets. These work perfect. The reason for that, the staff has just complete long range. You can attract pretty much anything. It does a big bit of damage. It does massive area damage with that fourth quadrant from your combo. And the bracelet is the complete opposite. It devastates things close range, but also has a special move that can really help you out. And that's gonna be the mines that you're able to lay on the floor. Because of this, these two combo together extremely well. You've now got long range, and you've got a way of drawing them into a complete minefield. Which can be a lot of fun to watch as everything gets devastated in front of you. Also, another great thing that I enjoy, going down the staff half, means that you're able to actually unlock a kind of little elemental pet that you activate that will be drawing from your AP when you're using your skills. This thing absolutely tears things to pieces whilst you're using all your other moves. So far not much has stood against this build and I've had a lot of fun playing it. I'm going to chuck on a little bit of footage, show you what it's all about and you can decide if this is a gameplay for you. Right, hopefully from that you can tell whether this is for you or not. If it is, we're going to be going over what kind of attributes and talents you should be chucking on. Remember, it's early game, you're going to work towards others later on. Now for your attributes, I spec the heck out of attack 
because you want to get as much from your staff as possible. Most times, like I said, you're very long range, luring things into a minefield or just making sure they're taking a lot of damage before they even get to you. With our HP, we should be able to pick a lot of that up from our actual skill tree later on. If you want to put a few into here, you very well can, but you don't have to. I wouldn't spec much into the last one yet, and if we need to change things later on, you can always respec and muck around with these a little bit later on in the game. For our talent points, I found that this was the best first off. So from the very start of the game, I went up and grabbed Magic Gem. Then I've bopped over to here, Triple Falks. You can have up to three Magic Gems, additively increasing your AP increase rate. These two together are going to be able to get our skills up a little bit easier, which is what we want because we want to have that buddy on our shoulder doing a lot of damage with our fire attacks. Just up from there and we've got Rejuvenation. Pints of Stardust re restore more AP but take more time and the maximum number that can be carried is slightly decreased. However, you still get loads and it gives us a nice bit of extra attack. Just over from here and Potion Knowledge. Cells restore HP at a faster rate but the maximum number that can be carried at a time decreases by 4. HP plus 45. Gives us a nice bit of extra HP. We've now got a much faster HP restore. Or if we've got slightly less of them, I've never had an issue because I think you get around 16 or so, so it's still massive. From here, we're going to turn our wheel around and we're going down the complete path that's going to be upgrading our staff. So you're going to bop on and get your effect when using the staff attack. You can charge to cast a stronger spell. You consume a magic gem to shorten the charging time. Focusing Ray, charge while in the staff's charge ray states increases its damage. Again, not focusing on that, but if you did want to use it, you have got an added damage now. You can slow move whilst in the staff's charging ray state. Just down here, add a fourth hit to the staff's attack chain. That is massive. You want to be getting that. It's going to give you a lot of damage. Over from there, staff expert. The staff's technique costs less SP. And just down from here, focused flare. This is going to be our little buddy I'm talking about, over the shoulder, massive damage, a lot of fun to use, even though it looks like it's only a little bit of damage, because of how long you've got it for and it's focusing fire, it actually does quite a lot over time. Over from here, you're going to want to head this way, Magic Breath replaces the staff's chain attack with Magic Breath. This, as you saw earlier, does massive, massive single target damage if you can manage to pull it off and you've got a little bit of free time. From there, you're going to head all the way down this way. This one's going to give you a magic explosion, meaning that the breath does even more damage. And lastly, you're going to want to grab this, which I've not quite got yet. I'm about one or two points away. Enter Judgment Stance, making your attacks become the fourth hit, added by the fourth quadrant. Only one skill can be active from a stance at one time. If you look at the little picture in the corner, it's going to show you just how ridiculous this is and you are going to do masses upon masses of damage whilst having a lot of fun, whilst being in probably a lot of mines and not much being able to get towards you. Early game, I'd say this is a little bit overpowered but fun to use. I will probably be using this all the way through the game and I'll let you know how it turns out for end game. After that, if you need anything else, probably spec it out a little bit for just damage and maybe a little bit of health. And later on, you're going to want to bop down this path. It's going to be going into your mines. The bracelet's going to morph into a sword just over here when you're hitting them. Then you're going to want to try and make it all the way over to this one and just over here. It increases the detection range of the bracelet's magic landmines, automatically chasing enemies that come close to them, but no longer launching them up. So you do lose the little knock-up effect, but you'll have much bigger range on them and it'll be a lot of fun to watch, especially if you start specking into more of them. For the perks, pretty much like I said, it's a beginner one. I have free potion knowledge, rejuvenation and magic breath. So far, I have only fallen over once in the game and that was through my complete own fault and not noticing a skill that was going to kill me. But yeah, ultimately, I'd say that it's a lot of fun to use and if you like mages, this is probably the way to spec yourself out. As always, Full Things Gaming, Full Things Xbox. Take care. I'll see you on the next day.